Hello, I'm Gary Kavistad, as we just learned. I'm an instrument builder and a musician. I grew up in the outer suburbs of Chicago in the 1950s, near the airport, surrounded by prairies and railroad tracks. I heard a lot of interesting sounds back then, and I love them all. I've always been interested in improving things and creating things from an early age. My curiosity of the ancient worlds led me to learn about the sounds and the music of the ancient musicians. That led me to my graduate studies work in music while incorporating metallurgy, woodworking, and musical acoustics. The idea behind that was to build instruments to maybe recreate some of these ancient sounds and share them with other people. That led me to creating a business in 1979, which I call Woodstock Chimes, so that I could make musical wind chimes and instruments for everybody. Some of my earliest memories were sounds, like the sound of the family car driving over metal grates in the road, the sounds of antique car horns and town parades, and on Saturday mornings, you'd see me in front of that tiny television watching cartoons, and I love the sound effects. Long live Gerald McBoing Boing. A few people remember that name. We had birds in the backyard, of course. I'm not sure they were nightingales back then, but we had crickets in the garage. And with all those train tracks around, I heard these sounds quite a bit. Once a year, even as a child, I remember this great sound at the stroke of midnight. In high school, I was introduced to the music and philosophy of American composer John Cage, who taught us that music was all around us, we just needed an open mind and open ears to hear it. Cage's music was often written for junk items like brake drums, empty tin cans, and sheets of metal. He, uh, came to the conclusion there was no such thing as silence, and even wrote a piece to illustrate that, which he called Four Minutes, 33 Seconds, where the performer comes out on stage, sets his or her instrument down, and doesn't do anything for four minutes and 33 seconds. The idea was to open the ears of the audience to ambient sounds that are going on at all times. So I'd like to perform a short excerpt from this work for you right now. All right, it seems like you enjoyed that. So <laughs> if you did, go online and listen to complete performances. You'll love them. And I understand that it's a very popular ringtone for people you don't want to talk to. <laughs> In college, I read a really cool book by composer, instrument builder Harry Parch called Genesis of a Music. This is where I learned about the tuning systems of the ancients. And uh, Parch was so curious about this as well, he built these gigantic instruments, some of which were capable of producing 43 notes to the octave. The modern piano has 12 notes to the octave, but you need these notes in between the notes of the piano to hear those ancient sounds. So uh, Parch got these scales off of papyrus and uh, vases uh, that the ancients uh, notated, and uh, I too was interested in these ancient scales and recreating them, but I did not have Parch's instruments. So I would often, as a student, visit the landfill, we called them dumps back then, and they encouraged you to shop there, to take things away. And so I was a very good customer. I saw a pile of aluminum lawn chairs there, and the only reason they were there is because this webbing was broken. In that pile, I saw potential metallophones, or xylophone-like instruments. So I grabbed a whole bunch of them, cut the tubing up into various lengths. Here's one such. It has a musical tone. And I cut a whole bunch of random lengths and put them on a platform like this. This very instrument I built in the 1970s I called the adapted lawn chair. So I, re I reanimated the lawn chair, which sounds like this in the raw stage. I mean, Cage would love that sound. but. 
This is what the adapted lawn chair sounds like. Now, it's not the ancient scales, but it sounds old. Uh, <clears throat> what uh, I needed to do, I, I realized, because these were random lengths, they made random notes, I needed to create an instrument to make the uh, scales exactly the way the ancients did. Uh, the longer the tube, the slower it vibrates, the lower the sound. The shorter the tube, the faster it vibrates, the higher the sound. When I went back to Parch's book and uh, learned about this scale from a fellow named Olympus from the 7th century BC of ancient Greece. He was a flute and lyre player, and this is his scale played on an instrument I built called the Pipe Dream. When I first heard that sound, I have to tell you, uh, chills went up and down my spine. I felt like I was a sonic explorer opening up a tomb for the first time in thousands of years, and this sound came rushing out at me. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, anyone can play this instrument, as illustrated by my daughter Taza 30-some years ago, and her sister Maya used to love playing this. Uh, I hope that Taza's newborn son, Luca, carries on this tradition. But I wanted to make something that everybody could enjoy, and I'm not sure everybody needed a metallophone. So I went to the advice of my father, who was in uh, manufacturing in Chicago back then. His company made plumbing specialty parts, how ironic. And um, he told me that if I make a product, I should make products that everyone can enjoy. So I thought about what I could do, and wind chimes came to mind. The wind plays them so perfectly, and I could tune them. Back when I was starting to do this, Wind chimes were mostly made by visual artists, and they were stunning, but they, didn't, they sounded more like that lawn chair. So I decided I was going to make a, a wind chime tuned to the scale of Olympus. So I resurrected the scale, the ancient scale, and made this wind chime, the chimes of Olympus. For me, that's a very mysterious sound. I loved it. And that was uh, almost 40 years ago. Uh, uh, my company now makes hundreds of different ancient scales and modern melodies like Amazing Grace. And we even have a Chimes for Autism give back chime. So I wanted to further illustrate the beauty of these ancient tuning systems. I built this instrument I call the Vista Phone. It's made up of 32 tubes and rods tuned to uh, a series of notes known as the Natural Harmonic Overtones. Pythagoras told us about this series, and it's quite beautiful. I'll play uh, the scale so you can hear it. They play in perfect harmony. Composer Baird Hersey. Thank you. A uh, lot of good vibrations coming out of that thing, I'll tell you. Uh, Baird Hersey, a uh, composer, wrote, uh, heard this instrument, loved it, wrote a piece uh, for the group I play in Nexus, and his vocal ensemble, Prana, uh, made up of throat singers, people who could actually make multiple sounds with their own voice at one time. They can match the harmonics of this instrument. He wrote a piece called Chiaroscuro, which we uh, performed and recorded. Here's a short sample from that wonderful piece. I'll let Baird know you enjoyed that. So I've been working with American composer Steve Reich since the late 70s. In 1967, he wrote a piece called Piano Phase, and it's scored for modern instruments, and I've played it on uh, modern traditional instruments many times. 
But I wanted to hear what this piece may sound like on these ancient, uh, with these ancient tunings. So I made this instrument I call the Reichsbone. Uh, it's uh, wooden bars like xylophone. The piece is constructed in three sections. The first section uses a 12-note pattern. The next section is an 8-note pattern. And the last section, a 4-note pattern. It's a duet, so the two players start off in unison, and one player incrementally speeds up, forming a little chaos at first, and then locking into the next beat. So lots of harmony and rhythm, rhythmic interest going on. It's sort of like Row, Row, Row Your Boat, where several singers are singing the same thing at different times. So since it's a duet and I'm up here alone, I invited my good friend Loop Station to join me. That's this electronic box on the ground here, which I recorded the last pattern into. And uh, I will press a button, and Loop will repeat this over and over again, while I play uh, the same thing, just these four notes, and I will speed up slowly four times until we're back in unison. This is the third section of mallet phase, as I call it. Everything in the entire universe is in motion. In, in other words, everything's vibrating from the smallest subatomic particles to the oldest gravitational waves. I built these instruments and tuned them very carefully to specific relationships so I can hear this ancient music and apply it to the music that I was playing and that I play. The um, composer John Cage told, told us to listen to the sounds around us, and if we do, I think that we will hear music that we may have not heard before. And we might hear something that's both old and new. I believe this could be applied to all of our senses. Thank you for listening. <laughs>